Hello everyone and welcome to what might as well be the most overrated indie game ever released. But I still fucking love it. Welcome I was gonna to say Undertale. That. I was gonna say that. Yeah, look, 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 look. If we're gonna start out, like, I think it shouldn't be a hot take that Undertale is incredible. Like, don't get me wrong. Again, I absolutely fucking love this game, but I feel like it's way too overrated. Like, way too many people out there are, like, basically sucking off this game and Toby Fox by extend. I mean, honestly, Toby Fox is a really good m musician. Oh yeah, like, that's definitely the biggest, uh, the biggest compliment I will give to this game. Aside from it being a really good fucking game, the music is absolutely amazing. Yeah. It's just a shame that if you play it in one of a, in one of three ways, um, or more accurately one of two ways, over. you don't, you don't get the music. You get like a really distorted version of... T okay, so for those who don't know, um, Undertale is a title that is effectively, um, gives you two ways of playing. The, the one that a lot of people tend to go for is the one where you um, save everyone, so you spare everyone. But there is a, uh, there's a second way which is kind of frowned upon by a lot of people, and that is the genocide run. And genocide... Okay, can I interrupt you real quick? Go on. Is there a story as to why you named, named your character Kevin? Because Kevin is a chat name. <laughs> okay. Okay, no, actually, um, okay, so, this is kind of a long story, but, um, Kevin kind of became an inside joke at one point for me. Um, about a, I won't say one and a half year ago, I, I sent a meme in my, in my, That's I, not a soul, that's a heart, you stupid flower. So I, I sent a meme in my IRL friends uh, Discord server, which um, I'll, I'll try to see if I can if I can put it on screen here. But the screen was basically a, a shitty um, screenshot of, of, of YouTube, where uh, where it was a video regarding Herobrine, I believe the the Minecraft urban legend, and the comment said, "Bro, if I if I if I ever come across Herobrine, I'll just call my friend Kevin." And underneath that, there is a there is a shot where it's basically the infamous um, fight scene between uh, Raiden and Senator Armstrong from Metal Gear Rising, and it it, it basically has the it, it it Senator Armstrong just has uh, Kevin put over him and and Raiden has um, Raiden has um, a hero Brian. Hero Brian. If if you if you know the scene, you you know you know exactly what I'm talking about. Yeah. And yeah, so my friends, they didn't understand the meme. They, they were like, oh, it's, it's, who, is, who is Kevin? Yeah, guys, who is Kevin? And then I, I kind of just started going with the name for pretty much every everywhere I, everywhere I could. Like, for fuck's sake, I named my horse in Breath of the Wild Kevin. <laughs> but anyway, as I... <laughs> As I was about to say before you, um, before you cut me off, uh, yeah, so basically, uh, in the genocide playthrough, uh, you have to kill everyone. You murder everyone. You and, murder everyone. Yeah, but the problem is, it, it's not necessarily, her, um, killing everyone you come across. You have to get out of, you have to go out of your way to kill everyone until the, um, until there is no more combat encounters. However, you still get combat encounters, but it transitions to the combat screen, but then it just says, but nobody came. And yeah, I'm not really a big fan of that because it, it's a major pace breaker. It makes a, it makes a game take way to uh, make way too long to progress. And while there is sort of a, while I have a, um, a genocide playthrough halfly uh, recorded, I, I haven't continued it, and I don't think I'll finish it, because the ultimate trade-off is trade-off is is not worth it. Especially since, if you complete a genocide playthrough, the game will actively, um, like basically shame you for it. 
like in in the context of the game. And I should probably explain, by the way, um, if you haven't played this game before, your best bet is to stop watching this video and play it for yourself. Unless you really have no interest in it and you just want to hear us talk. I mean, I guess Maxicus get to enjoy our videos too. Um, yeah. This game really does benefit from a blind playthrough. But anyway, um... I do love the fact that basically, whenever you get into a counter during this segment of the game, game after one turn, Toriel just slides in and it's like, I will murder you. I will fucking end your life. Yeah. I mean, to be fair, this is the this is the opening phase, and well, yeah. as the name already implies, Toriel is the Dude, tutorial. Toriel. Yep. She's also what some people would refer to as Goat Mommy. I'm not one of those people. I'm totally joking. I am, but there's only so many fictional characters I can simp on. <laughs> I mean, hell, hell, one of the thumbnails I had for, had mine for Spyro 2 was basically was just putting your icon over, um, over money bags in the scene first, in the scene when, um, Hunter's sitting on him. Wait, hang on. We had a separate thumbnail for that. I, I had, I had one in mind, but I can't, but I, I'm no good at Photoshop. I'm no good at Photoshop. Ah, uh, yeah, no, I, I. I def I definitely get that. I'm pretty much the same way. The only reason why I ch why I have we have an alternate thumbnail for episode 15 of um, San Andreas is because that showed up during the um, choices. Yeah. <laughs> and I just and I just and, it, and I lost it. Yeah. Anyway, right now we are disobeying mommy. She um, told us to stay there, but yeah, you're you're kind of prompted to. Um... So you have to leave the room. Okay. Yeah. It says take one. Take a piece of candy. And I'm a good citizen. What happens if you take more than one? Um, you can take up to four pieces of candy, and when you do, the um, the tray of candy falls over, and if you interact with it again, it says, um, now look what you've done. Okay, so nothing really. No, there, there's no, there's no long-term consequences, which, to okay. be fair, it would be pretty shitty if the, if the game goes like, yeah, here's this, here's this totally irrelevant thing you did that we're going to punish you for. Okay. I mean, to be fair, there's definitely some games out there that do that, where it, it, it's like, when you have no clue if something, we do something that you think is absolutely minimal, but it, I don't know, it, it like, unlocks the second half of the game or something, I, I don't know. Like, I, I don't know if you have a, a similar example of this. Um, I'm pretty sure Not that really. I I'm pretty sure that I encountered it before, but once again, I seem to have forgot. Not really. All right. Yeah, so this kind also. of yeah, she's Go kind ahead. of she's kind of really um, calling us a lot. Yeah, she. <laughs> I should also mention that it's been a while since I last played this game. You mean between your recording this and... Uh, between the last time you played and uh, your recording of this, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and, and that's because, as I've already said before, um, if you do a genocide playthrough, uh, the game will effectively give you a... N not a corrupted save, but a... Like... It, a, a permanent... Corrupted-esque uh, world. Yeah. 
because again, um, if you do a genocide route in the um, in the context of the game, uh, you are effectively destroying the world, and you cannot return to a world that you destroyed. So if you start up Undertale after doing a genocide run, you just get a black screen, and um, and there are noises like uh, wind blowing, and you have to stay there for ten minutes. And then the game offers you to uh, restore the world, but you but you will um, sacrifice your soul. And so, what does that do? It means that if you do a pacifist run, you will still get a bad ending. Oh. So at the end, you get uh, you get two options. Uh, there is one option where. Um, where once you return to, you, to the human world, you uh, continue to live with Torio, and one way you choose to uh, go back to um, go back to your home. Um, in both cases, you get a bad ending because in the in the one where you return to your home, um, the final um, the final thing you see is a is a picture with like all the all the friends you made through uh, through the game, and if you do a soulless run. It basically has their um, their faces uh, cross out. Okay. And if you stay with Toriel, um, the final scene you get is one where uh, Toriel, as your character is sleeping, uh, brings you um, brings you a slice of cake. But then, as the scene ends, um, you get you get like a scary noise, uh, and you see your character with like red blinking eyes and it kind of implies that after that your character kills Toriel uh, and the others okay yeah so that's something I really don't like yeah like on, on one hand I, I do get what I do get what you're saying but look I know that it I know what the intent of it is right but you have to understand, at the end of the day, this is still a game. Yeah. And I, I also wish they, it would really be easier to... <coughs> like... <coughs> Sorry, I'm allergic to shitty game design. Uh, but yeah, um... Like, I, I kind of feel like the having to wait uh, 10 minutes after a genocide run, I feel like that is enough punishment. Like, don't taint any further playthroughs with that. Yeah. Now, you mentioned during one of our playthroughs that you haven't played Undertale. Is this still the case? No. I have not. I've Okay. The first I've gotten to is the Bone Brothers. That is the first I've gotten to. I've never gotten past them. Okay. Right. So, I have almost... Uh... Made it to Undine. I'm sorry, can you say that again? Undine. It's... It's Undine. I still say it like the, um, like the, uh, summon spirit entail entails. Undine. But that's not how it's pronounced. I don't care. I do. Undyne is fucking awesome. <laughs> like, I, I, I might as well say this right now. I, I definitely feel like Undyne is one of my favorite, if not my favorite characters of the entire game. One thing that- and, and yet, Saiyans is the one that got a costume in Smash Bros. Yeah, but that's because Sans is meme material. But no, the one thing that I like from Undyne is that she's a 
like really determined character and if you do a genocide run she's actually the only character which has a which has a boss fight and it's a fucking brutal boss fight too like i lo i love undyne's boss fight in um in the in the genocide playthrough like i think in more ways it's even better than uh, than sansa's one but i but i say that but i kind of practice a little bit with um the sans boss fight. like i can do sans boss fight that's not a flex or anything but the thing is and this is something i i definitely feel like a lot of people should do if you're curious about the the supposedly brutal uh, sans fight um i'm pretty sure that if you google uh sans fight you can actually just play it in your browser and that's actually how I how I trained for the uh, for the Sans boss fight. Alright. Yeah, like if you it, it's not that difficult if you know what you're doing. You just need to hold out for like uh, 24 rounds. That's it. Right. It's over before you know it. Still, it's like 24 rounds. Yeah. I mean, they're fun. Oh yeah, uh, the reason why I'm doing this is actually something I'm showing off later. Okay. But I, I might as well say it right now. There, there are some items where if you consume them in the middle of a of a boss fight, um, it actually gives you the, the upper hand. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah, like, um, later in the, like, way later in the game, there's a, there's a character, um, Moffat, she's a, uh, she's a spider, and if in her boss fight you consume any of the, the spider's, um, baked wares, she actually just lets you go immediately, because she's like, oh wow, you supported our, um, you support our men in the, in the ruins. There's a similar uh, thing going on with the final uh, boss fight against um, against Asgore, where if you um, if you consume the the pie that Toriel gave you at the at the beginning of the game, um, Asgore will go down significantly easier, and these attacks also won't hit as hard. So it's definitely something I recommend. Looks a little bit similar to you to if you use the music box on Father Gascoigne in Bloodborne. I guess. Basically, I if you if you use the if you use the um, music box you get from his daughter, um, daughter, you he will freeze up for a few hits. However, if you use it, I want to say three or four times. He goes beast, which he does not do until until after you whittle down half of his health. Right. Yeah. Well, I I haven't played uh, Bloodborne yet. I do have it on my I do have it on PS4, but at this point, I mean, I don't know. Like, I still have yet to play Demon Souls. Um, I kind of want to return to Dark Souls three one of these days and. Maybe Elden Ring one day. Sure. I don't know. The, the problem with From Software titles is that there's like a whole bunch of them which effectively boil down to the same thing, except this time it's steampunk, or this time it's it's open world, or like I still kind of see that's the same. <laughs> where the oh, hell did to talk where the hell does Toriel get her groceries stuff oh, did this why did you pick up the knife okay this is the part where I got kind of um, kind of confused I, I forgot the controls 
Yeah, okay, so now I equip the knife, which I'm never going to use it anyway, so... Then why did you equip it? I don't know, because I can. Toriel, I'm right here. Why are you calling? Because... <laughs> She said, she said for you to follow. Yeah. Why did you not go fully follow? Because I had to save. Toriel, that's fucking disc- Do goats eat snails? I don't think so, but you also have to remember there is escargot. Hang on. Uh, try to prevent goats from ingesting snails or slugs that may be on the plants. The snails or slugs may have eaten wild di- Oh my- no, it, it- I looked it up and it's- it actually links to a bloody reddit post on the Undertale- on the Undertale subreddit. God damn it. Also, Edgy, I have a question. Yes? I never noticed this until now. Um, did you mean to have leave your mouse cursor on the screen? <laughs> no, I I noticed it. Um, I, I do notice it later in the in the playthrough. <laughs> All right. Yeah. It's okay. So since you now have the pie, what is, and since you chose 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 it, what do you think of butterscotch? I don't know. Either why I... Why did you pick butterscotch? I don't know, like... Why did I name my character Kevin? Or technically... Or technically... Or technically, spoiler, it's not our characters that named Kevin. Our characters named Frisk, and the, the first human to land in the underworld is named Kevin. But we'll get to that when we'll get to that. But yeah, um, no, I, I, I don't think I ever had a uh, butterscotch, either that or it's called, uh, it's called something different. So I'm just going, like, wow, I, I keep opening, I keep opening my, my browser. So, okay. Oh yeah, I had, I had butterscotch. Yeah, I, I fucking love butterscotch. Okay. It, it's way, it's way better than cinnamon. Don't at me. Yeah, so we've got the first boss fight of the game incoming. Well, quote unquote, boss fight. If you're doing basically past this neutral run. Yeah, this is actually one of the more, uh, one of the more tricky ones to, uh, to figure out. Because th th so far you've learned that if you, um, if you act a certain way, um, eventually their names become, uh, become yellow, but that doesn't happen in this one. Instead, what you need to do, and I'm, I'm kind of just showing off the moron way here, but I, d I don't know about, it. like, yeah, ev eventually you have to just keep, uh, using mercy on her and it will eventually, um, eventually she'll go easy on you. Yeah. Yeah, and if it if it keeps going on, um, her like bullet, so to speak, will even will even avoid you actively. 
which is a which is actually quite funny because he, you can just literally um or or something like that where she hits you once but she's immediately like oh my god no i'm sorry my child you're dying <laughs> no i'm not yes you are <laughs> i'm doing this on purpose to show off what happens her attacks also hurt you way less. So, yeah, at, at this point it, it only does like one... Yeah, yeah, see, th there there it goes. And the, okay, yeah, there's, there's you not... There's them dodging. Yeah. But I, I do they really like... have to move. I do really like it because it, it really... Um, it really shows the character of Toriel, which... Once again, even though... Um, like it, it, it's weird. Once you're out of the, once you're out of the ruins, she, you basically only see her once uh, at the at the end of the game when you're about to do the final boss fight. I, I don't really like it that that she basically goes like, yeah, in in order to protect myself, I'm I'm going, I I'm going to I'm going to stop talking to you, not letting you rely on me. Like if you if you want to protect me, just at, at least at least still like talk to me frequently. Yeah. Yeah, like yeah, like maybe maybe like once in a while, ta um, she basically will call you and um, give you like some advice for um for someone. Yeah, I mean to be fair, eventually. Like pretty early in the game, you can get um, after Papyrus's uh, boss fight. You you do get his number, and you can call him for um, once you're in specific places. But yeah, the problem I have is that throughout the entire game, you still have Toriel's phone number, and you can still call her. But every time, it's just, but nobody came. It, yeah, it's like that's that's really weird. It's like. If you're going to not have her answer, have the phone number disappear. Yeah. Now, it's something that I feel, um, and I know this is completely off topic, but it's something I feel um, Grand Theft Auto 4 actually does pretty well. Uh, once you ended that game, pretty much every um, every non every contact that you cannot hang out with uh, anymore or cannot talk to anymore just gets deleted. So the only characters that are um, that remain in there are your actual friends. And Roman. And Roman. Well, depending on the ending that you get. Yeah. Yeah. Also, um, interesting trivia about, um, about this scene right here. Um, if you kill Toriel, but you then quit the game and reload your save, uh, Flowey will actually call you out on it. Which is interesting, but I I don't know, like I I don't like it when games go like, yeah, we know we're a game. It more depends. It more depends on how it on how it goes. At doing doing what you just explained, yeah, that's stupid. That's bullcrap. Yeah, I I mean, don't don't get me wrong. Like something like. I don't know, Colonel Campbell going like, push the action button to action. That is something that I can, I can still sort of appreciate, but again, like... Or, you created a time paradox. Well, If you kill Ocelot in, in yeah. MGS3. Yeah. 